Hi, this is Denson Paul Pollard, and I'm recording this video in response to questions about nerves and performance. What are some things that we can do to learn how to perform well, even when we're a little nervous? First thing I want to say is that it's been my observation that even the most seasoned performers and even the most meticulous preparers still get nervous and still occasionally make mistakes because of nerves. And hopefully that's a liberating idea for you. It takes some of the pressure off of you to uh, perform perfectly uh, all the time. Everybody's human and everybody makes mistakes. But having said that, there are some things that we can do to help us uh, play well even when we're nervous. Things that we should do. And let's face it. Uh, this is the topic for learning how to be successful as a professional musician. You can be the greatest performer in the world in the practice room, but if you don't learn how to deal with your nerves in performance, the world will never hear your artistry. So very important. I'm going to toss out five ideas, things that we can do to help us play well even when we're nervous. The first thing is about diet. Uh, one of the things that I do, and I think everyone should do uh, to help uh, prepare for a nervous situation, is limit sugar and caffeine. I love coffee, and I love sugary sweets, but when I'm getting ready for an important performance, I eliminate those things from my diet completely. And it just kind of helps me stay in control of my breathing and my heart rate when, when I get in the moment. So limit sugar and caffeine is the first thing. Number two, visualization visualization away from the horn and with the horn. When I'm preparing for a performance, I like to, away from the horn, close my eyes and imagine that I am an audience member. I like to see myself walk on the stage and I like to try to imagine me playing the piece or the excerpts. I like to see the hall, see the people, and see myself performing well. This is very important. The unconscious mind tries to complete the picture and the scenario that it's got up there. And if we're imagining ourselves playing well, our body will try to complete that picture. So visualization away from the horn. With the horn, when I'm uh, practicing my pieces, I like to visualize the setting. I like to see the hall. I like to see the people. I like to see the seats. I like to imagine the whole, the whole thing. And I play my my pieces while psychologically putting myself in that place. Visualization. It's a little bit like when uh, professional athletes imagine themselves taking and making the game-winning shot. Uh, it's a very important tool for preparation. Number two, visualization. Number three, repetition. In Russia, they say repetition is the mother of improvement. I'll add that repetition is the mother of helping you perform well under stress. When I'm preparing for an audition or a, a solo performance, I will run my excerpts or my solos many times before the actual performance. I'll do mock auditions for, for people that I like and I don't like, people that make me nervous. I will run my recital list, uh, my, my solos for people many times before the actual performance. And I will do them... Uh, with an elevated heart rate and elevated breathing. I will run in place, I will do jumping jacks so that I can breathe heavier because that's the thing that happens to me when I get a little nervous. It's harder for me to take a big breath, my heart rate gets up. So I'll, I'll get myself in that place and I'll do repetitions. Visualization and repetition together, if you do that a lot before your actual performance, by the time you actually do perform, you will have done the performance many times and again it will just take some of the pressure off and you're more likely to play well so number one diet number two visualization number three repetition number four this is uh, right before I walk out on stage or walk into the room for an audition make sure you do some deep breathing make sure you get your body uh, ready to, to breathe so that when you walk out there and, you, and you're about to play you can take a deep breath and play your first note well do some long, some long deep breathing right before you, uh, right before you play. And number five, and this is very important, I really think the key to performing well is a long-term commitment to the fundamentals of your playing. If you're a person that has a daily, consistent routine of breathing, buzzing, long tones, slurs, scales, etudes, if you're doing that every day for years in advance, you're much more likely to have a successful performance, even when you're nervous. So those are some ideas about performing and dealing with your nerves.